Um, so after I'd finished up uh, Rupert G's and I had my t-shirt and I had seen Ashton and I had seen uh, uh, Nadell, I decided I would uh, go back to the Brill Building. And uh, I've been to the Brill Building already earlier in the week and I talked about why it was important. Um, it uh, has a lot of, lot of history in the popular music uh, genre, particularly in the 60s and, and even earlier than that. And uh, so there a lot of, you know, a lot of history, a lot of songs were recorded there, a lot of songs were written there. And uh, so the building really means a lot to me. Uh, when I had been there the first time, I, I got someone to take my picture uh, standing in front of the, the big big golden uh, doors of the Braille building. Um, however, uh, the camera that I had with me that day was my, my the camera that I used for taking my videos, um, which is a camera which is meant for, for taking videos and for taking stills. Uh, but from my experience, it really doesn't take very good still pictures. And when I went home and I looked at uh, the uh, my picture from the Braille building, it just I, it just looked really really blurry and it just wasn't it wasn't a very good picture in my opinion um, so since I was right there I figured you know I was just up the street uh, David Letterman show is not very far um, from the Brill building so I figured I'll go down and get someone else taking my picture and they can use my other camera my still camera um, which takes still takes great pictures even though it's, it's quite a few years old and the still camera is what I use for most of the other still pictures I took like when I was standing uh, in front of the Statue of Liberty and the Brooklyn Bridge and, and th those sorts of things I did that with my still camera so I figured I'd, I'd get uh, someone to take my picture uh, with the still camera uh, standing in front of that sign and it would give me a better uh, memory uh, of the Braille building uh, so I went there and usually finding people to take your picture really isn't very difficult like particularly in touristy areas like like when I was at the Statue of Liberty in Times Square and the Brooklyn Bridge, it's just so easy. Like, you just look around and there's usually tourists everywhere. Tourists that are taking their own pictures and they don't mind at all if you just say, excuse me, would you be able to take my picture? Uh, but the Brill Building is different because although to me it's a really uh, significant and uh, important building, uh, you know, that people, a lot of people don't uh, realize the significance of it and it's not, you know, one of the top destinations in New York City for them. Um, so the first time when I, I got my picture taken in front of it, I just someone was coming out of the building and they were kind of just talking to their family and, and there wasn't they were just kind of standing around. There wasn't a whole lot going on, um, so I just asked them to take my picture and they had no problem. She was really happy to take the picture and uh, and she did a good job with the, the picture. It was just the camera that, that wasn't uh, wasn't working very well. Um, so anyways, I, I, I looked around and I stood there for quite a while trying to find someone to take my picture and I finally found a guy that didn't really look like he was was too busy and he said oh oh sure I'll take your picture and uh, I don't know this guy he, he he held the camera and he kept pointing it in all sorts of different directions and he he, he he didn't really know how it worked I wouldn't be surprised if this was one of the very first pictures he's ever taken because this guy I don't know he just he just kept moving it closer to his head and, and looking all over with it and 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 like looking on the screen and I, I don't know what he was doing uh, so he took my picture and uh, he said, he said, look at it, make sure it's good. And I looked at it and like the picture is like, like almost 45 degrees. Like it's, he just totally held the camera uh, really crooked when he took it. And I said, oh, can, would you mind taking another one and trying to make it a little bit straighter? And he said, oh yeah, sure, no problem. And he tries again and he's still struggling and he's holding it sideways and stuff. And I'm just like standing there. And then all these people start walking past because I guess one of the one of the traffic lights turned green so then uh, when it was clear all of a sudden it's, it, there's ton people coming from both directions and I'm looking both ways saying okay hang on wait wait for these people to cross and uh, and then someone starts to come towards me to go inside the building and I was like okay well I'll wait for you know them to go inside the building and let the doors close so you can get the proper effect of the uh, the doorway because you know the door's got to be closed you can't have one that's half open it's not going to look the way I want it to look. So anyway, so I'm I'm, look, I'm waiting there for this, these people to go through. So I look to my right, and there's this uh, there's this man there. There's two men that are walking in uh, to my right. One man's like fairly short, and he's wearing sunglasses, and he has this this little hat on his head, and he's you know he's a f fairly older man, but he's quite short. I noticed that immediately that he seemed quite short. And he anyway, so so this man, I'm he, uh, so I watch as as these two men walk past me, and I'm waiting for the door to close for them to go through. And then all of a sudden, after after they walk past me, I say I say to myself, "That was Paul Simon. That little man was Paul Simon." And I look behind me, and uh, and I'm looking through the door, trying to squint, trying to see who it is. And then I realize, oh, there's still a guy over there with with my camera. So I turn around and, and say, "Okay, hang on." <laughs> I look in, and <laughs> and then I go, "Okay, let me grab my camera." And then I look in again. I, he, he's already in the elevator. I have no idea. And I'm saying, "That was Paul Simon." 
I know that was Paul. I've seen Paul Simon so many times. That's got to be Paul Simon. Like, I've seen him on TV. I've never... He's never been... He was just right there. Like, that was Paul Simon. Like, and, and I was 99% sure it was Paul Simon, but I never... I only looked at him for two seconds, and the thought only occurred to me after he had already passed me. But I knew it was Paul Simon. But I was so frustrated because I was 99% sure, and I'm never going to know if that really was him. Until an hour later, when I was going through my pictures, and I was thinking, okay, well, I'm looking at the pictures, and they're all crooked again, and I'm thinking, okay, well, do I go back and get someone else to take my picture again? And then I'm looking through, and I see, oh my goodness, that's Paul Simon in my picture. So one of the pictures that the guy snapped was as Paul was walking into the building. And I just, I just can't believe that <laughs> I have a picture with Paul Simon in it, and... <laughs> It's it just, I mean, that 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 was one of the that was the icing on the cake of an amazing trip in New York City was was Paul Simon walking right beside me going into the Brill Building, and it totally makes sense that he would be going into that building, right? Because I mean, I had talked to somebody from the Brill Building uh, earlier, and he said, "Oh yeah, big big stars come here all the time," and he named some of them, and one of them that he named was Paul Simon, and I mean, it still has a recording studio in the building, and uh, you know, it's still a really big. Uh, um, like a musical uh, building, a lot in the music industry still goes on there, and, and apparently Paul Simon goes in there uh, right when I was standing there. So that was uh, that was amazing for me. And you know, after I looked at the picture, I'm I'm totally totally convinced that, that was him. That is him in my picture. And uh, I mean, that's just uh, <laughs> definitely the most exciting thing that happened in uh, in New York City for me, and, and probably the most exciting thing. Uh, that's happened in my life because Paul Simon is like totally like one of one of the greats in music as far as I'm concerned. Like I I'm a huge Simon and Garfunkel fan. If you watch uh, my videos from from earlier in New York City, uh, I went to lots of different places. I went to his high school. I went to his elementary school. I walked across the 59th Street Bridge listening to his song. I mean I'm just a huge huge Paul Simon fan. Um, you know I've heard all the albums. I love all of them. Um, <laughs> I just can't believe that, that one of my musical heroes uh, is in my picture with me. Like <laughs> this is uh, it re really exciting for me, and I just I I been walking around with an enormous smile on my face ever since that happened. And you know I think back on it and I think, well, like, why didn't I realize? Too bad I didn't realize earlier. How too bad I couldn't have said something to him. But I mean I don't even know what I would have said. Like. <laughs> I would have just probably stuttered or something, because <laughs> I mean, I would. Just, he's just, he's just, uh, you know, really, really great guy that uh, I really look up to in in the industry, and uh, <laughs> I, I just don't, I don't know what to say. I was, uh, it was, it was too much for me. I just totally got blown away uh, by by seeing Paul Simon in New York City. Uh, but anyways, uh, so before I actually realized that he was in the picture, I uh, the place I went to, I went back to the uh, FAO Schwartz uh, toy store to go on the big piano. So I did that, and I have some video of that. And uh, so that was a, a fun experience as well, um, you know, getting to see the piano in action, and I actually got to go on it and, and play it. Uh, unfortunately, there was about 10 or 12 other people that were on the piano at the same time as me. Uh, so it was really difficult to actually, you know, play a song and actually hear it, what you were playing. Um, but I, I mean, I did. I, I played Mary Had a Little Lamb and uh, a little bit of Heart and Soul, and uh, and uh, it, it was good. Um, and now I can say I, I've been on the the big piano, and uh, that's what I wanted. Um, so so as I was I was sitting outside of that building after I got.